If you have your Bibles, and I hope that you do, you'll find your way over to Jeremiah chapter 18. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 6 this morning. Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1 through 6. And uh, as you're finding your way over there, um, it's amazing. What I, well, I, it's, it is amazing. It's always amazing. God is always amazing. But um, the message this morning is about the hand of God. Now, I, usually I am here on Wednesday night when they have choir practice, so I get to hear the song that they're going to do. But I wasn't here for choir practice to hear what they were going to sing uh, this morning. And, uh, but uh, isn't it wonderful how God just, he just takes things and just puts them together. And you'll see, you'll see this all come together right here as we read this passage together again. Jeremiah chapter 18, starting in verse 1 and going to verse 6, it says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel, and the vessel that that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do, I, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord. Look, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you this morning for your word. And Father, as we open your word, I pray, Lord God, that you would open our hearts and our minds. Lord, that you would help us to see uh, every thought and every idea in your word this morning. Father, as we are gathered here in this place, I pray, Lord God, that you would uh, have your way with us. Lord, that you would uh, allow the Holy Spirit to just work and move and, and touch and change lives. Father, I pray that you would give me clarity of thought and clarity of speech, Lord, that your word would go out unhindered from this place. And Father, I ask that you would bind Satan and set him far outside this place, Lord, that he'd have nothing to do here this morning. And Father, we just praise you and thank you for your word and for this opportunity to gather together and to hear your word and to share your word. And these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. So, God uses many images, and He has used many images throughout His Word to describe His relationship with His people. We're very familiar with the, with the thought or, or the relationship between the shepherd and the, and the sheep, and between a husband and a wife, and, and the father and his children. God has used all of those all of those things to, to describe and, and talk about and to teach about His relationships with us. All of these are wonderful and they teach us many valuable lessons about life, about ourselves and about our relationship and uh, about the Lord Jesus. One of the greatest portraits of God and His people to be found in the entire Bible is this picture of the potter and the clay. And I'm going to just tell you this morning, I'm probably going to struggle with this because this is one of those passages when I read it. Is there sometimes when you read something, when you read God's Word, and there's just some passages that strike and they, they hit you. They hit you right here in the heart and they hit you in the gut all at the same time. And, and, and it just kind of moves you a little bit to tears. So I may struggle a little bit with this, but, but if you would, if you see me struggling, please, uh, please pray for me. But I love, this is such a beautiful, beautiful picture. And, uh, and God gave us this. It's a portrait that God painted with His very own hand. You see, this potter has one purpose, one thing in mind, one plan. And His plan is to take this clay, from, and from this clay He is to produce a vessel. A vessel. And He wants to make a vessel that, that will that'll reap a benefit, something that'll be good, something that's usable, and something that's valuable, and, and, and that, that, that people will find, that He will find to be useful, and, and that it'll bring honor to Him. 
And, and, and have you ever noticed? Uh, have you ever noticed when you go into a pottery shop and, and you pick up a piece of handmade pottery and, and if you flip it over and you and you look on the bottom of it when the, when, the, when he's through with it, uh, when he's through with whatever it is he's making and it's all done and it's a finished product and, and he wrote and, and and you look on the bottom you'll see it's signed or initialed and maybe even dated by the one who made it. This is um. This piece, uh, the, the piece that he makes, the pieces that he makes are intended to be used by him and by others. This is, God is God's intention for, for us in our life as well. He excels at taking old worthless clay and transforming it into, in, in, into by his grace into a vessel that honors and glorifies him. He takes something that uh, right out of the ground, Jesus... Uh, Right out of the ground, it's, it's, it can't be used like it is. Jesus saves the sinner by His grace. And then He begins the process of changing that vile sinner into a vessel that will produce a profit for the kingdom of God. One that will be useful to Him in His work. And one that will bring honor and glory to His name. God is interested in taking the worst the worst that he can find, and changing it into the best heaven has to offer. In order to accomplish this goal, the potter must work with the material that, um, that leaves so much to be desired. You see, uh, when he starts, he, he, he starts with clay that's in the ground, but you know, they, don't, they, they don't just go and, and, and dig it up and, and bring it back to the pottery and, and, and it's usable just like it is. In order to accomplish this goal, the potter uh, the potter must take this material and he's got to do certain things with it. Clay is found in the ground and it's not suitable for use the way that it comes up out of the ground. It's dug out of the ground and it's brought to the pottery and, and it's allowed to weather there in the pottery for weeks. For weeks it has to sit there. And then it gets dry and the dry material is then dumped into this uh, tank or this, this wooden trough and, and it is covered in water. And as it sits there in that water, the lumps, they begin to soften and, and then it's stirred in the water until all those lumps and the, and the stuff that's bad, it, it kind of gets disintegrated and it kind of turns into a, a slurry or a slush in the trough. And that, tr and that, and that slush kind of forms and they call that slip and the slip is drawn off into another tank. And when the clay has settled, the water is drawn off and, and the prepared clay is finally packed away. And it's allowed to stand for another six months before it can be used. In other words, the clay, as it is taken from the ground, is worthless. You see, it must be transformed into a usable state. And, and, and this is the process that takes time and energy on the part of the potter. And, 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 and he, he's, in constant, he, he's constantly working with the clay. This is a perfect portrait of those that are lost in sin. You see, we are worthless to God in our natural condition. We are worthless to God, just as that clay is worthless in its natural condition when it's taken out of the ground. However, He is able to see the vessel that, can, that we can become. You see, He sees past that worthlessness that, that we are. And he sees, the, he sees the final thing. He sees what He's going to make us into and what we're going to become. He begins the process that will bring us to a place of usefulness, something that can be used, something that's good, something that honors Him. He digs us out, He washes us off, He, he cleans us up, and then He dries us up. See, this is a picture of the process of a sinner must go through prior to salvation. The heart, the heart is pricked, and the, and the conviction of God begins to work in the, in the heart. Do you remember? Do you remember when you were lost and you were undone in your sin? But you knew there was something that was that kept working in your heart. You, there was something that was telling you, no, I, I know this isn't the right thing. I know this isn't the place I should be. Do 
Do you remember? Do you remember the Holy Spirit working in your life, but and you, you didn't know then that that was the Holy Spirit working in your life, but there was something, there was something, and it was pulling at your heart. It was pushing, and it was tugging, and it was needy, and it was moving. The sinner is led along in little baby steps until he reaches the place where he receives Christ as Lord and Savior. Now, at this point, God begins the molding process. And it's pretty evident that the Lord didn't have a whole lot to work with when He, when he found me. You know, I'm sure He just saw, saw me. I was just a, a lump. I was worthless and useless to Him. But He didn't pass me by. The potter uses several tools to bring this clay to a place where it is usable. The first tool that he uses, well, we kind of talked about already, is the shovel because he has, to, he has to dig the clay up. This is the tool that he uses to dig the clay from the earth. and This is a picture of the Holy Spirit who comes to where we are in sin. In sin. And he speaks to us in convicting power. And he draws us to Jesus. Again, do you remember... Do you remember when he was convicting your heart? Do you remember that time in your life? You know, it seems like so, sometimes we, we, we get so far ahead of ourselves that we forget how much he loved us and how hard he worked. That's a labor. That's a labor to, to dig, to dig in the ground, in the hard ground. But he loved us enough that he dug. John chapter 16 and Verse 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send Him to you. And when He has come, He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in Me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Are you thankful this morning for the conviction of the Holy Spirit? Man, it's, it's kind of, you know, have you ever noticed though that conviction never comes at a convenient time? <laughs> does it? No. And, and sometimes it hurts a little bit, doesn't it? But I'm so thankful. Have you, you know, I, I, I Something I, I remember, uh, and, I, and I think about it often, you know, we have to be so careful uh, in this world that we live in because we do, we, we kind of get comfortable, right? And things are running along pretty smooth and, and all that, and man, you know, uh, you know, so this little thing happens in our life, and man, we kind of think, oh man, that was a little sin. We kind of slid in under the radar, you know. We slid in under the radar. I didn't even feel bad about it. And then all of a sudden, that conviction of the Holy Spirit... Praise God for the conviction of the Holy Spirit to let us know, hey, we need Him. We need Him every day. Because on our own and left to ourselves, we're, we're a mess. Praise the Lord for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said it's best would speak, uh, said this the very best when he was speaking to Saul on the road to Damascus. And he said, It is hard for you to kick against the gods. And he, in Acts chapter 9 and verse 5, God. Have you, have you, do you know what that word means? I, I'm sure some of us do. Maybe that's a word we use. Have you ever heard it used? You know, they galled somebody into doing something. A gold is, is, is something that is like a stick with a point on the end of it. And it's what, it's what a herdsman would use to kind of to, to move the cattle or the, or the sheep or, or whatever in the direction, in the place that, that they want it to go to and, and to get it going in the direction that they want it to go. And that is... That is exactly what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. He, he, he prods us and He pushes us and He moves us around and he, he gets us going in the direction that He wants us to go. Well, maybe, maybe there's uh, some that are, are, are right in that very place here this morning, right now. This may be where you are right here this morning. You're, you're here. You... you, you, you uh, 
You, you feel that pressure. You feel that pointing. You feel that nudging of the Holy Spirit working and moving in your life. If the potter is digging around in your life, he's calling you to, to come to him. And I want to say something to you this morning. If he is moving and pushing in your life, if you feel him, if you feel him that conviction in your life, I, I beg you, please come today. Please come today. Don't wait. Don't wait. You'll never regret that decision to come and follow Jesus, to, to know the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And then, then there's the mallet that he uses. This is another tool that he uses. After the clay has been cleansed and processed, it, 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 is, um, it is placed on a table and is beaten with a, with a wood mallet. And the potter does this to remove any air pockets or air bubbles that might be trapped in the clay as this, as this worked. You see, if, if he doesn't get these air bubbles out it'll, and, and, and they, these pockets form, it'll produce a weak spot in, in the material and it causes the vessel to be fragile and unusable. This is a picture of the trials and calamities of life that tend to work together to shape us into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. We may not like the pounding. I would say most of us wouldn't like the pounding of the mallet. But its sole purpose is to make us, to make us more usable and pliable in the potter's hands. And then there's the wheels. There's more than one. It's two. There's a big wheel at the bottom. There's a big wheel at the bottom, and, it, and it's usually made out of stone, and, and it sits close to the floor, and it sits in a little socket, and, and it's able to turn. And, and then from that big wheel, there's a, there's a shaft that comes up out of the big wheel, about three foot high, and there's another wheel, another wheel uh, above that, a smaller wheel that's mounted on top. And the potter, he uses his feet to spin the large wheel on the bottom. And as he does, the upper wheel is turned. And then the upper wheel is where the, the clay is placed. And as that clay is turned, the potter will place his hands on it and, and he'll begin to shape it according to, to his will and according to, to the vision that he has, to, according to, to what he wants to happen with it. And these wheels are the circumstances and the situations that Life brings our way. Life oftentimes seems to, to be like a big old circle, doesn't it? Man, it's spinning. Sometimes it's spinning so fast, we can't begin to, to keep up. Sometimes, sometimes it's, be, it's turning so slow, we can't figure out why, why it's taking so long for it to get and make a complete uh, circle all the way around. It seems that we just get past one trial, and, and here comes a, another trial. These things, these things in life are hard and, 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 and they take us and they leave us confused and they leave us loaded up and kind of uh, uh, loaded with burdens. But we have to remember this morning that the potter controlled the speed of the wheels. And they're only a rotating according to his wheel, his speed, his timing, his rhythm. And never forget that God is still in control, regardless of, of what we're facing in this life. And man, I know, I know that's, uh, you know, it depends on which side or whatever that thing is that you're facing, that you're standing on, right? It's so easy to say, you know, uh, God's got this. It, it, it's so easy for us to, uh, you know, we're standing on the other side and we're in a, we, we want to encourage one another. And, 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 and that's an easy thing to do depending on which side of that calamity or, or that situation that you're standing on. Romans chapter 8, though, in, in verse 28, I think it completely sums this up. And we know that all things work together for good to those who God loves. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are the called according to to his purpose. And then there's the hands. The hands. 
that the choir reminded us of this morning. While the clay spins around on the wheel, it is never out of contact with the potter's hands. He's constantly touching it. He is in constant contact, molding and shaping and bringing this clay along through His loving guidance. And if He were to ever remove His hands from this work, from the clay, the clay would spin off out of control. It would spin off of the wheel and and it would be lost. See, He remains there with the clay and He brings it along until it becomes his, his it, until it becomes what he's desired it to be. What a beautiful picture of the heavenly Father. You know there are times when God seems to be kind of remote, doesn't he? There are times when when it, it seems like that that we're removed or he's removed some millions of miles away from us, and and, and our needs and the thing that's going on in our life at that very moment. However, He has promised us that He will never leave us, that He will never forsake us, and that we will always have Him. He will always be there for His children. The child of God need never fear that the Lord will walk out on us and leave us to spin out of control. No matter how fast the wheel spins or what comes our way, we can rest assured that the Lord of glory will never remove His hand from us. He's always in touch with the clay. Even in the potter's hands, things can still go terribly wrong. But the fault is not with the potter, it's with the clay. There are times when even with the best of care, the vessel can still get out of shape. You see, it's this way with our lives sometimes. We're going along and and life seems to be doing all that it's supposed to do and things seem to be good. We're growing in the grace of the Lord and then uh, uh, comes along this temptation or or this trial and and, and for one reason or another we're thrown off a balance and, and, and we become marred, we become marked in the potter's hands. Every turn of the wheel makes the blemish even more visible. We can can see it more and more, and He sees it more and more. And it soon becomes evident that God cannot use us in our present shape. Look, I want to share something with you this morning. We never, ever need to be guilty of believing that this can't happen. That this can't happen in our lives because it does happen and it happens every day. And it happens when you least expect it to happen. There are many people in this world who started off running well for the Lord. But along the way they got weak and they got out of balance in their lives. And before long they were vessels of dishonor. They were broken. You know, they never started off for it to be that way. They never planned it to be that way. But, but it happened, and, and the same thing can happen to us. So never think that it can't happen to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12 says, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. Because his hand is resting on the vessel, the potter knows instantly when the problem arises. That's why, he, that's why he's in constant contact with us. That potter, as that wheel is spinning and turning, and, and that clay, and he's working it with his hands, he can feel it in his hands, and he can tell when there's a, when there's a problem with whatever that is that's, that's going on with that, with that piece of work. You know, this very same thing can be said in our lives. He senses that change in the clay. And he begins to take whatever steps are necessary to correct the problem. He is instantly aware when things aren't as they should be. And at that moment, he takes the necessary steps to get us back to a usable condition. Man, have you ever been there? Have you ever been in that place in your life? Well, you know you belong to him. You know you, he's had his hands on you. You know he got, he's got his hands on you. 
but you've allowed yourself to, to get into a place that, uh, that you know you're not supposed to be. But you know, I'm so thankful that you know, he, doesn't, he, doesn't just, he doesn't just stop. The wheel stops turning. He doesn't just stop the wheel from turning. and He doesn't remove his hands. But he continues to work. At that moment, at that moment, he, he does whatever's needed to make us usable again. But never think, never think, even for a second, that you're going to hide something from the Lord. Never think that he's not going to feel or know or see whatever that, whatever that blemish is that we have. He sees it all. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on, hey, hey, listen to this, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Yeah, how about that? If God knows when I have, when I have a need, if God knows when I have a need, it stands to reason that He also knows when I have a sin in my life or, or when I have a flaw in my attitude and it needs correction. You know, I'm only kidding myself if I think I'm keeping it a secret from the Lord. The best thing that I can do in res- to be responsive to His touch and yield myself, yield to His activity in my life, to, to yield and be moved by the power of the Holy Spirit, the sooner that I reach that place that He desires me to be, the sooner that He can begin to use me again for His glory. See, we don't have to stay in that condition. Even though the clay is, is, is misshaped and it's deformed, it's still, it's still in His hands. He, he still has His hands on it. The potter takes the marred vessel and He presses it back into a, a lump and He begins again. Do you understand what that means? Do you understand what I'm saying? Is, is yeah, maybe, maybe he started, he's worked it up, and, and, and then all of a sudden, it's out of balance. That soft spot or whatever it is, and, 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 and he takes it and he presses it. He literally takes it and he folds it back down. He, he takes his hands and he presses it back down into something that doesn't have a shape, and he, he starts to work in it all over again. And the next time the vessel may turn out well, but it may also be deformed once again. And if it is, as long as the clay is is, uh, moldable and pliable in his hands, then the potter's going to rework it and he's going to reform it until until he's able to produce the vessel that satisfies him. Again, this is a picture of the work of our Heavenly Father in our lives. There are many times along the way that I can look back and I can see myself deformed and misshaped. And those times He lovingly pressed me with His hands. And He began the process all over again. You know, sometimes that process wasn't pleasant at all. It often hurt. There are times when the Lord has to bring His chastisement into our lives. We have to have that time of correction. He he does it not because because He doesn't love us, but just the opposite, because He does love us so much. You know, if that was the case, if He didn't love us and and He was just there to to make us and, and set us over here to the side of some decoration, you know, Man, he just he just take us off the wheel and, and throw us to the side and in and, and the scrap pile. But he doesn't do that. He does it because he loves us and he seeks his best for us in our lives. His best. Did you hear that? Not our best. He seeks his best for our lives so that we can be our best for him. When the vessel is marred, the potter does not throw away the clay. But he starts fresh. But he starts and, and doesn't throw it away and start with a, with a new piece, but he continues to work with what he has. You know, there's a reason for this. Because he's already invested so much time in salvaging the clay from the soil. Remember? Remember how it started? 
with labor. He, he dug that up. He dug it up out of the ground and, and, and he did all the things to the clay that the clay needed to have done to it to, to make it usable and workable. He's, he's, he has a vested interest in, in what happens to the clay. By the same token, never has the Heavenly Father thrown His clay away. He's paid an ultimate price for His clay. He died for it to redeem it from sin and from disuse. Now He has determined that He will make something special out of it. That's you and me. God saved us, and God saved us to keep us forever. John chapter 10 and verse 28 says, And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given me, them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Now, I want to say something. I want to say something. I, I want to say that <clears throat> there are times when the clay becomes no longer pliable to the potter's hands. Now be careful here, okay? Be careful. When this happens, the potter has no choice but to, but to set aside that hardened vessel and to choose another lump of clay to work with. Now I want you to know this morning that that is not a picture of losing one's salvation. That is not what that is saying. That is not what that means. But it is a picture of being shelved. That is a picture of being shelved. There, is a, there are times when the Lord removes His hand of blessing and places us aside and uses another vessel instead. However, when you can be assured that this will never happen in your life, if you'll stay moldable and you'll yield to the potter's hands and you'll stay pliable. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 says, but I discipline my body and, and bring it into sub, uh, subjection. Least when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. According to verse 6, and I'm going to close, I'm going to close, according to verse 6, the potter has absolute control over what becomes of the clay. In his hands, in his hands, it is in his hands, and he makes of it what he desires. The only duty that the clay has, the only duty that the clay has is to yield to the will of the potter. Man, if we will place ourselves in the hands and genuinely allow the Lord to work, in our lives, to allow His will to work in our lives, that He will bless us and He will build us into that vessel of honor and glory for Him. All right, we need to get real, real this morning, right here and right now. Can you honestly say, please, if, you, if you're looking down, don't look down. Look up right now. Please look up. And don't look at me. Look, look up here at this cross. Can you honestly say today that I'm totally yielded to the will of God for my life? Can you say that? Can you say that with conviction and you know that you know? Or would you have to say this morning there are areas in my life where I'm still, uh, I still want to have control. There's still areas in my life that, that I haven't given to the Lord. There are parts of me that I haven't given to the potter. There are circumstances that I face and, and I still try to control and control those things and I, I still want to make them work out the way that I want them to make them work out. Where are you at on that this morning? It reminds me of a story I, I read of a, of a gentleman who broke down on the, on the road as he was traveling and he calls and he calls and uh, gets a tow truck to come and get him. And, and the tow truck comes and he hooks up to him and, and he says, well, I'll just ride in the car. And the, tow, the, uh, the repair shop's just down the road a little ways. He said, I'll just ride in the car and you just pull me to the repair shop. And, and so he does. And the, and the tow truck driver, he hooks them up and they start on their way. And, and uh, they finally get there. And man, the, 
the tow truck driver says, man, I, I, didn't think I, I didn't think I was going to make it up that last big hill. That was a big hill. I just didn't think that we were going to make it up that hill. And the man replied, I didn't think we were going to make it either. And that's why I kept my foot on the brake pedal so that we wouldn't go backwards. Now see, that is a, that's an amusing little story and it's funny. But to live without complete surrender to Christ is the same as trying to go forward and to hold back at the same time. Would you go with me to the Lord in prayer this morning? Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word this morning. Father, uh, I thank you for this beautiful portrait that you've painted for us of our relationship with you. Father, I, I think for my own life, Lord, the prodding and moving of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm so thankful this morning that, Father, you came and many times you set me on the wheel. Father, thank you for not uh, taking me off the wheel and setting me on a shelf. But Lord God, thank you for keeping your hands on me. Father, I pray that uh, us as a people, as a church, Lord God, that we will never experience a time when we're set on the shelf. Father, I pray for that one that may be here this morning who's never had the opportunity to be in the hands of the potter. Lord God, I pray that you would uh, allow the Holy Spirit to move on them in a great way in this place this morning. Father, for that one that uh, knows you as Lord and Savior, but Father, they, they see that big old wheel and it's spinning, it's spinning. It's spinning so fast, and, and Lord, they kind of got off the wheel, and they're sitting to the side, and, and they want to get back on the wheel, but it's, it's moving so fast that they don't know where to jump back in. Father, I pray that you would give them the time, and then, Lord, you would make that wheel spin at just the right speed, that, Lord God, they'd have that place to, to get back on. Lord, that you could continue to shape them and mold them and make them usable. Father, I pray that as we see your words, and we hear your words, and Lord, we allow your words to shape us and move us. Father, that uh, right here, right now, in this place, that you'd have your way with us. Lord, if there's something that's standing in the way, Lord, there's some blemish that we have. If there's some weak spot, or uh, Lord, maybe there's a crack or something, I, whatever it might be. Father God, I, I pray that you wouldn't let us leave this place this morning until you take care of that, that you repair us and you put us back into to usable service. And Father, we'll praise you and thank you for all that you do. And all these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen.